Good evening and welcome to St Paul's on this Ash Wednesday. Will you please rise as you're able. Come back to the Lord your God. He is kind and full of mercy. He is patient and keeps his promises. He is always ready to forgive and not punish. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing today, Your Mercy Calls Us. Friends in Christ, we begin with God's promise. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart to confess our sins and ask him in the name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. You may be seated or kneel.
I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you, do you desire forgiveness in his name? I do. Do you believe that Christ has made you holy and do you want to be led by the Holy Spirit to live a holy life? I do. The Lord our God is full of mercy, always ready to forgive and not punish. Jesus has shared our sin and through his death and resurrection, he has enabled us to share in the very righteousness of God. So as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you. On behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace then be with you. Amen. Let's take a moment to greet one another in this peace this night. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray for God's mercy. Loving Heavenly Father, you look in mercy on our weakness and you forgive all who repent. Show us our sins, make us sorry for them, and create in us new and clean hearts. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit 
one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading comes from the book of Joel, chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion, shout, sound the alarm on the holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him? A grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from Paul's second lesson to the Corinthians chapter 5. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yes, yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father sees in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may uh, be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. So are the words of Isaiah chapter 2. Let's pray. Loving God, pour out your spirit into our lives, into our hearts as we uh, come to this Ash Wednesday, as we begin a journey of Lent with Jesus. Open our ears, our hearts, our lives um, to listen to him and walk with him in his ways. And we'll walk and work in our hearts um, your good gifts for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So yes, another season of Lent. And for some of us, um, maybe there have been many that have gone before. Some may ask, well, so what a, what's Lent about? What's the point of an Ash Wednesday service? Maybe this is a, a, a new or a new again uh, time for you. Lent and Ash Wednesday as you reflect on your journey with Jesus. What are the ashes all about tonight? Well, we'll try to unpack a few of these questions just as we go and walk with Joel uh, in our first reading tonight. The word Lent itself comes from an Anglo-Saxon word meaning springtime. Springtime, it's a time anticipating spring growth then, if you will. Lent is a springtime for us, a springtime, if you will, for our souls, for our, our, our innermost being, for our, our whole persons, a time for deep reflection. It's a time for cleansing. In many ways, Lent presents us with a, um, a spiritual New Year beginning again, even though we're, we're already um, nearly at, this, at the end of February in the calendar year. Lent is a season to contemplate our lives in the journey of the cross we are invited to make with Jesus again this Lent. So as autumn beckons in our part of the world very soon, how is this a 
uh, a springtime for our souls. How does that occur? Well, as I say, let's turn to the prophet Joel tonight and the people of the southern kingdom, Judah, that he speaks to and see if, if it might speak something to us. And I must say from the outset that we're not about to undertake a three-step program of this is how you do a springtime for your soul during 40 days of Lent. But I think what we will be invited into, called into, is an earnest journey calling us to dwell with Jesus and dwell in the Word of God. As we come to Joel in chapter 2, the people of Judah, this is the southern kingdom, are yearning for something that might be a springtime. They and their country were being crushed, devastated. Joel describes the siege they were under from drought, from locusts, from other nations who were taunting them. Where is your God? And the problem for Judah and the people there was that they were weak from the inside out. Maybe sometimes we can relate to such seasons in our lives too. Life can bring its own pressures. Life can bring its oppositions in various ways in our lives. Sometimes we can even face vitriol because of our faith, because of the deeply held and conscientious views that we have as Christians walking with our Lord. And in our lives too, the Spirit of God working through the Word will sometimes, maybe often, bring us face to face with the law of God. We come very uncomfortably face to face in the mirror of the Word with our sin. I don't know, have you ever related very uncomfortably with the words of the psalm that we sang uh, that the choir led us in tonight? David certainly was when the prophet called him out for his terrible evil. Have you ever felt uncomfortable in your sin? I know I have. Lenten reflection then can be sometimes very uncomfortable. Remember you are dust, we hear in our ears, and to dust you shall return. As we listen to those first verses of Joel chapter 2, the siege of devastation that um, Judah has been facing really is only an entree to the day. The day of the Lord is coming. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Terrible, dark, bringing people to tremble. And for the people of Judah, this would be giving them really their just deserts. For these people have turned from God. Where is your God is a pretty legitimate question to be thrown at them. And what might they answer? In myself? In my greediness? In my desire for power? All of these might have been answers that were given by those people in that day. What about today? The day of the Lord is coming. Where is your God? St Paul's, people of St Paul's, where is your God? Are we really oh so different and so superior to the people of Judah, I wonder? The day of the Lord is coming and don't we know what it's like too to turn from God sometimes when it suits us? Hand on heart, I can say with the psalmist, surely I was sinful at birth. All my sins, even those sin and se secret Hidden, I should say, hidden and secret ones uh, suggest that um, I'm a sinner and the day of the Lord is coming. Aren't you and I, aren't we too in need of help, a springtime for our souls before that day? Do you know when the day of the Lord is, when the day the Lord will return for you? Are you ready? And so God, through Joel, calls to Judah and calls to Neville Otto and calls to St Paul's. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, 
slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Return to me, God says, with all your heart. Repent, that's the call. Turn, turn afresh as we begin this season of Lent. Turn afresh to your Lord, not because of the threat of imminent destruction, but because of his sure compassion and his heart of love for you and for the world, for the people in your lives. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Here is the springtime for your soul and mine as this new season, this next part of the adventure journey begins. Our Lord, as he starts out in his ministry in chapter 4 in Matthew's Gospel, begins with the same words, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Luther, in the first of his 95 theses that he got excited about knocking on the church door, said the whole of the Christian life is to be a life of repentance. That's his call to you and to me now, tonight, at the beginning of this Lenten season, to grow in your walk with your Lord, turning anew. So this season called Lent, this Ash Wednesday with its ashes, this springtime of the soul is not about three easy or straightforward spiritual steps and for one season of 40 odd days, but it's a lifelong, long, lifelong longing of God's heart for you and for every single human being, those people who are very close to you and me, uh, all the people in our lives, to be in a life-giving relationship with you for life. And specifically in Lent, it's the Lord's merciful call to us to turn to him which motivates what we do and how we do it. Make no mistakes, God has the power to destroy. God has the reason because of my sin and yours to destroy. But rather he comes abounding in love and grace and mercy. That's what our ashes are about tonight. We'll hear the words that I, God willing, will say at a funeral tomorrow um, at the Box Hill Cemetery. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's where we will all return. We know our frailty, our mortality sits before us, our inability to stop death as much as we'd like to. But these ashes tonight are in the sign of the cross remind you that God has turned to you and to turn to us in all his power in giving us his son to go to that place of death for you and for me. And the sign of the cross in the ashes is a sign of promise as you walk the days ahead. And the call to turn afresh during these days uh, and to focus on God for you. Maybe you hear the Lord's call in Joel and Jesus' call in Matthew that fasting is a sign of repentance, and it is. And maybe some of you will practice a form of fasting over these days of Lent. I pray you blessing in it. It's a tradition that I sometimes wonder whether we truly understand anymore. The point of the fasting is to help us, I think, in large part to meditate on our Lord's suffering and death in the word for us. So maybe it's on Fridays that you might be helped in your fast, the day uh, that we'll come to Good Friday beckoning, or a, or a Wednesday as we remember the ashes of this day. Maybe some of us go without something for the whole of the Lenten season. My friends, consider these things. And Luther said, as we come to the Lord's table, you know, fasting and other preparations are good, but prepare yourselves for the supper, for the journey, for life with a heart, with a heart that's rendered to listen to God for you. Joel says, render your heart and not your garments. St Paul's, where is your God? He's with you, just as he promises. He's with you from the time of that baptismal promise, I am with you always. 
in the word, in, in the word with water, tonight in the word uh, with bread and wine, in the word in your home, in the word shared with one another, in the heart of faith in your sister and brother in this place. Not three easy steps, not one short season, but a springtime of the soul for life. That's God's longing for you and for me. Turn to God again this season and be prepared to grow in the joy that he has for you. Amen. And the grace and peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Ash Wednesday invites us to come back to earth, to wonder at the gift of life, my life, the life of Christ. These ashes were once trees and shrubs and places where life was lived to the fullest. Once they were full of life, now they are black and grey, dry and lifeless. Without the life of Christ, we too are dry and lifeless. We receive these ashes as a sign of our sin, our mortality, our sadness, our repentance. It mixed with the waters of our baptism, these ashes make good fertiliser. Repentance allows the seed of the gospel to take deeper root in us and bring forth the fruits of love, joy, peace and generosity. This is the hope in which we receive these ashes this night. For from the burnt ashes will spring the green shoot of life. This is our new life in Christ. Let us pray. Merciful Father, remind us through these ashes that we are dependent on you for life, hope and forgiveness. Remind us through the cross that the death and resurrection of your Son is new life for us. As we receive these ashes on our foreheads, may we know the joy of Jesus' suffering love for us. In his name we pray. Amen. So I invite you to come now, just come forward down either of these aisles to receive ashes from uh, Sue or I on your forehead the, in the sign of the cross of life from the ashes, a symbol of death, but new life arising. So please come forward as you wish.
may remain seated while we sing our offering hymn, Glory Be to Jesus. You may remain seated for the prayer of the church. Remembering all that our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, let us pray to our Father in heaven. Gracious Father, thank you for giving your Son to take away the sin of the world. Lead us to repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you for your Son's obedience to your will all the way to his death on a cross. Help us to be patient and humble, following Jesus in serving others before ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you that your son cared for the sick and the troubled and still does today. Make us compassionate and understanding towards others and bring your mercy through our care. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you that your son knew temptation, suffering and death in order to deliver us from it. Be with all who face temptation, suffering, or death, and lead them to have hope in the promises of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all in need, for those grieving, including the family and friends of Lynn and the family and friends of Pastor Milton, for those who are unwell or recovering, including Carl, George, Ian, Eldon, Margaret, Peter, Kevin and Marlene, Rose and John, Caroline, Jack, Louise, Phil, Alicia, Christine and Jacob. Bring them your healing comfort and peace. We ask today that you preserve those who are affected by bushfires and especially keep Dania and Brian safe. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your dear Son our Lord Jesus Christ, to be our merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. 
Help us to know him more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more nearly. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Sue. Would you please stand as you're able as we prepare to come to our Lord's table? The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, Lord God, Holy Father that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has taken on himself our sin so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and praise your glorious name. Our Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come, for all is made ready.
Please stand as you're able. Thanks, sir. The body of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood strengthen and keep you in body and soul to life everlasting. Go in peace and in the compassion of our God. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Accompany our journey throughout these 40 days. Renew in us the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, and fast from self-indulgence. Above all, May we find our treasure in the life of your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. So go in peace, walk in the way of the cross. In the name of Christ, amen. Remain standing for our closing hymn, which is an evening hymn, The Day You Gave Us, Lord, is Ended. Mm -hmm. 